It's because we're playing in that key. If we're playing in C, it's a lot easier. It's just... Okay. If we play it in C, it's super straightforward. But everyone plays it in C. Let's talk about these bad boys. Do you want me to go first? I got Corey first. Okay. Are we doing in this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. They always gotta start on that side. <laughs> They'd be like, why are you starting on the side? <laughs> okay. All right, hey guys. Got a beautiful and wonderful EEV ukulele, tenor size ukulele. Um, this one has all curly coal on the front, back, and sides. Really, really nice curly coal on this one. Got this back end strip right here, and then we also have the end graph here on the butt of the ukulele. Uh, beautiful Powell or abalone inlay around the outside of the uke, or as well as around the three signature sound hole of the EEV ukulele. And also we have black and white purfling around the abalone, around the sound hole and the outside of the ukulele. Um, ebony bridge, fretboard faceplate, EEV signature EEV bird in the Pearl inlay, just about their cool little details. We got a satin mahogany neck, really smooth on your fingers when you're playing, and then planetary UPT gold tool tuners in the gold and white color scheme. And last but not least, ebony ebony binding on the top and back, as well as this really nice whitish wood purfling along the ebony on the top or on the top and the back. So. Fantastic instrument, and if I had to say a few words about this, is that um, I played quite a bit of EEVs over the past year that I've been here, and um, Charlie never <laughs> never fails to amaze me with how awesome his instruments are, and every time we get a new EEV come in, I, I would tune it up and try it out, and I would always joke around with him, like, man, this is my favorite one, and every time he'd bring one or two at a time, like, this is my new favorite, and it, it's, it always seems like Charlie keeps upping the... the the greatness of his ukuleles and the sounds it, 
pretty much never fails to amaze me how like how well balanced it is. It has a really good low end, but then the A has such a sweet and punchy tone, which I really love. It makes it there's a lot of clarity on the A string, but really just clarity overall. The note separation. just such a clean sounding instrument you know even when you're playing up here it's super clean or then when you make this open C chord it just sings I mean gosh um, it's a fantastic instrument it's also pretty much set up ready to play already I mean the action's really low it feels really good to play it's really easy to play I like to joke to say that I have very sensitive half of girl hands, so when I play this ukulele, it just feels really nice. I feel like I can play this for hours without my hands hurting. So yeah, fantastic instrument. And one last thing I want to say about this one is that I played a lot of koa instruments, so I kind of have a pretty general idea of what koa sounds like, which is usually, um, usually bright and punchy and... Um, it's usually in that realm of a tonal quality, but um, along with the EEV signature sound, I remember when I first played this one, I was like, whoa, the sound is so big and mature and there's such a nice warmth to it. So it really surprised me when I was like, oh, curly call, okay, it's going to sound like this, and I know what kind of EEV sounds like, and then I strummed the C chord, I was like, whoa, so much depth, so much sound, and so balanced, I was like, wow. So... Again, this instrument's fantastic, and hopefully you can hear it in this sound sample. I mean, gosh, I, I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to stop and be like, listen, look at that sustain. Look how crystal clear. It's just so clean. The note separation. The, the, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. What struck the, me about that one too geez. is the overtones. Yes. 
you know, when you pluck this G note, you're going to hear this note and the C kind of kind of ringing in the background. You guys hear that? <laughs> when I hear that kind of Gosh. thing in an instrument, I'm like, ooh, that's special. It's special when you get to hear those overtones. Like, you really only find that on super high-end or yeah. high-quality instruments. And the EV is one of my top favorite ukes out there. I mean, I always enjoy playing it. It's always a pleasure playing these. Pretty much whoever gets these are lucky. <laughs> Yeah. I play. I play them for that for the sound soundboard for the podcast, and then bam, it's gone forever. <laughs> I'm sad. So then I gotta wait for the next. How many EVs you think we get in a year? Like um, ten on a good year? No, no, no. We get more than that. We usually get a couple of months. But you know, these are special. Like both of these are his top tier with the abalone around the body yeah, that, and everything. That's right. He usually doesn't do this right with the curly yeah. pull-up, so... And then, you know, top-of-the-line wood. Like, actually, this is really nice, dark, sinker redwood that uh, on the one Corey's playing. But, yeah, yeah really tell us nice. more about that one. really well with the Zerocote. And there's this certain look to this ukulele. You're just like, wow, that, I think, probably sounds amazing. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> This one is different. Um, playing so many EVs over the years, you already know, like, oh, it's going to sound good, but EVs have a specific sound. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It shows how well of a builder um, Charlie is for him to build a sound and have his own sound. So consistent. To be, yeah, to, and build Very consistent, yeah. yeah. Um, this one is almost completely different from that one as far as, like, bass response. Yeah. There's and still the EV tone to it but then the the woods on it yeah it like amplifies different the build kind quality of warm, already different yeah. kind of clarity you get you still get that really nice clarity and mm -hmm. separation but this one hits the lower notes a little bit yeah. different like the lower mids come out a little, bit, a little bit better i think this one's slightly punchier than that one but that one has more richness in the yeah, sound yeah good deep yeah i guess bass here sound different kind of bass mm -hmm. Because that one has a nice amount of bass. Mm -hmm. Especially for the curly claw. To me, the redwood one sounds a little more bold. Mm -hmm. It's like a little this bit. This is like a good like finger pickers you. You're going to do like that. The note separation yeah. is, is perfect. I think it's a little bit better. I, I feel like the the clarity or the note separation in this one is, is just a touch better. Mm -hmm. This one has... One. Uh, like a slightly bigger sound like the, when I play that one it it, it feels a little more reserved I think I think because it's you know the woods are denser it still takes a little time to fully open up this one feels open already like it's yeah big sound like you know give that one a year it's gonna be <laughs> even bigger and more I think rich this might be the, the sound I mean usually with a uh, stiffer back in tides you're gonna get um, maybe not so much warmth as like an all core yeah instrument that with redwood but you get that articulation and you, yeah i still think you get a I'm little bit it. more volume out of the redwood top you think the koa one is louder no that one is loud too right. but like this one i feel like there's a slight filter on it so the sound is a little more reserved but like i, I don't know how to explain it like this one has a bigger sound but that one sounds richer Different, yeah, like just yeah. different. <laughs> I don't know, whatever that means. You know? <laughs> this one I feel is brighter, has better clarity. I mean, we're comparing such subtle differences. Well, after I we mean, get a sound sample from Corey, we'll have you guys do like a, a short thing on both of them. Just I don't, to... not, I don't like with these two because they're two drastic wood, wood combinations. Yeah. For one, this one is a lot different than. Well, well, for a... me, I tried the red one first, and my initial thought was, I think this is the best sounding EEV I've ever played. Mm -hmm. I, and then I, I saw the Koa one, and I didn't expect to. Exactly. I, my I, thoughts. I, I didn't expect it to be on the same level, and mm -hmm. I, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, this one's actually pretty good too. So. Wasn't he saying that specific set of Koa he was using, like it, it just sounded amazing? Mm -hmm. Only. Oh, I, 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 I was like multitasking when he was in the room there, but yeah. Yeah.
the quality of each note co really comes out a little bit clearer on this one, I think. Gorgeous tone. <laughs> so good. It's lush. Oh my gosh. Lush and still clear, you know. I didn't even know you could play this. <laughs> I kind heard of. that song. That song was so hard. Wait, he's got a high G version that was originally, and he kind of adapted it. What is that? I've got there. Oh, you originally played it in high G? Yeah, and I played a low G after after because I thought oh, it sounds good with the low G though. You can use that as the bass line. You should listen to um, this album, Fables, by Kori Fujimoto. Little uh, project we did like six seven, years. Six years. <laughs> that was it's been a, too long. It's that time was the for... YouTube sound sample compilation CD. <laughs> it's time for a sequel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my Magnum. How do you say it? Opius. Opus. Op <laughs> opius. Opius. Opus. 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 Magnus Opus. Yeah, yeah. Magnum Opus. That's what, that's what Corey's working towards. Someday. Yeah. <laughs> Someday soon. That's one thing that people tend to look over, or I tend to look over on this issue, is how easy it is to play out of the. Yeah, out of the, the playability. I mean. It can sound great, it can look great, but if your hands are cramping trying to play it, or your hands are hurting five minutes in... I don't think I ever, my hands ever hurt playing on the no. Hades. No, the action's always low in the Hades. <laughs> and it's that loud with how low the action is. Imagine if the action was higher. I think it would punch through even more. <laughs> it would be even way louder. Yeah. So it's still loud with that low, low action. It's incredible. All right, we're going to break and eat. When we get back, guys, uh, remind me, let's do like a little 20-second thing okay. each from each of you on uh, these two, and then we're going to get into a new custom builder for us. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. 
Yeah, I know. That's a nice ring to that. Is that good? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Brightness on that one is like this one's smooth. This one has a smooth brightness. The other one is kind of is good, probably just for finger picking, because it's like the upper mids and the highs come out a lot better than mm -hmm. that one. That's not a bad thing though. I think it's just that one's good for. When you played your first note, just like, yep. See, we <laughs> did not expect that. <laughs> this thing is full of surprises. Hey okay. There. Um. Let's see. Uh, so crisp, smooth, it's so smooth. Okay, one more time. Oh, it's so nice. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, the resonance, I think. There's more resonance on this one. A little bit, just a little bit. Like you didn't do do it as much on that one. It's like those notes are more up front than, than that, like the higher higher frequency, the higher range notes. That's <laughs> so nice. Were you saying that one is better for finger style for picking? No, just because it comes smooth. It's not. It comes, yeah, it's finger picking. I think. Okay. Because there's you know you can hear all the notes better. They both sound great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one looks nicer? <laughs> and they both come oh. in the most handsome coffee tweed case. Yeah. It's super nice. I like some really nice brown. All right, we got a new new custom builder coming up.
Beautiful. So this is a cornerstone ukulele built by Peter Moreros in uh, California. And it's pretty impressive. He's got tons of cool features. Um, just a little background from reading his bio now, like uh, building guitars since 2003 or acoustic guitars. I guess he was building some electrics in the 90s, but um, just a few years back started with ukuleles and he's good friends with Kevin Ryan, one of the most sought after extremely expensive acoustic guitar custom makers out there. So you can see some of that influence if you peer inside the body looking at bracings and but you know with that said he made it his own and it's extremely unique kind of a sort of hybrid kasha design um bracing and uh this one has beautiful koa give us some thoughts mika yeah um first impression this thing is super warm this thing just screams <laughs> kind of ironic screams warmth it's like a wave of warmth when you Reminds me of Divine-ish. I mean, a little bit different. Divine, or um, I was talking to Corey earlier. It kind of sounds like a Dwayne Noble. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dwayne so Noble, very, yeah. very similar. I was saying that, too, when it came in. But, yeah, it's really warm. So, like, when you strum those open chords, or when you're playing on the first three frets, man, it's, you're just swimming in, in resonance. Yeah, so it is on the warmer side. Um, I believe these are nylon strings. So you're gonna get a fat warmer sound. You're gonna lose a little bit of clarity over that, but because of that, you're gonna be you're gonna have so much access to all of this sound. Yeah, those it's are really the nice. D'Addario titaniums. Yeah. With a low G, obviously. Yeah, so when you're strumming chords on this, it's really full. I mean, like, yeah, there's, there's still, you can still hear every note, you know. One thing that's cool is Peter's from Portugal originally, and uh, it's kind of the ukulele bringing, bringing it back to his roots, from the roots of this instrument before it became the Hawaiian instrument it is now. The Braguinha. And, you know, one one more thing I want to say about his is that he he built very clean, like this is impressively uh, meticulous craftsmanship, finish and everything, fretwork. He's very good. Oh, it's a radius fretboard. Yeah, but Mika, if you, it comes with. But let's see it. So, pull this right here. Okay. Oh no, it's a double knot. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I have nails. Opening it up. Very cool. Okay, I like the texture of the paper. So, certificate of authenticity, cornerstone fine handcrafted ukuleles. This document certifies that this cornerstone ukulele serial number is da 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 has been a custom built in Westminster, California, USA. Uh, this instrument carries a lifetime warranty to the original purchase against any manufacturing defects. Thank you for joining the Cornerstone family and may this instrument bring joy and happiness to those playing it and enjoying its beautiful music. Da -da -da That's awesome. So, this, 
really cool. Nice little I would dot frame this. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. Gotta roll this back up. Let's get uh, Corey to jump on this for a sample. Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's really warm. Yeah. One thing you guys will notice on the inside, if you look inside, the whole back is engraved oh, in yeah. designs. Yeah, that's one thing I saw Did before I close it. Did I mention it smells great? It's almost like a floral kind of smell to it. What is? A it's like a perfume kind like of yeah. scent. Kind of thing, huh? Yeah. The paper has that smell too. Very nice. <laughs> With a hint of CA glue. <laughs> yeah. Should I put the back up where the light can, I can catch a close up of what's going on in the back there? Oh, the inside? Yeah, the inside. Yeah, right there. It's, yeah, hibiscus flower. But that goes all through the back. That's nice. That's super nice. Little That's details. a cool curfing, too. Wow. It's the Kevin Ryan curfing. Nice. This is a pretty intricate looking design. Even the bracings and. Wow. That's cool. Freaking awesome. <laughs> It's a really nice old, like piano-like quality sound. This little
Oh man, that was that was tough. <laughs> All in the road. Oh. Huh. So uh, since that's from your island, what is what is uh, the title of this song? Yeah, so this is um, Olinda Road by Hoppe from uh, the 1990 album from Hoppe, Olinda Road. Um, I'm not sure if that's the actual like inspiration of the song, but there is a place called Olinda Road on the island of Maui um, in the Makuau area. And I've personally never been there, but I've seen pictures and I've, you know, I've heard from a lot of people. It's a really, really beautiful area. Uh, you can go hiking and a lot of people take pictures in there. So mm. Olinda Road very nice instrumental i learned it back in high school is it up in the mountain yeah area yeah where's makawa anyways it's um so when you land on maui and you're like outside you turn behind you there's haleakala it's kind of like on the left side left side okay yeah okay yeah so if like the mountain is like this like this it's like over here left side yeah so it's kind of like a big dome yeah it's on the left side okay so that was That's sweet. Cool. That was brutal. <laughs> trying try to get it. I mean, I haven't played that since high school. And then trying to figure That's out. A, That's the next song. What are you talking about? That was the first take? Yeah. Take one. <laughs> nah. Video magic. Nah. Um, these are Panels. impressive. You know, the Claras are pretty ridiculously huge sounding for a concert oh. size. Um, let's check out some of the new Romero's we me and Corey went down to the docks today and picked up uh, I don't know 50 Romero's or something like the that so some of the models that we make are the exclusive walnut back inside one so that's kind of what we're gonna feature here at the end of this one and mahalo like subscribe so that YouTube thinks we're worthy of showing up <laughs> and mahalo you gotta smash the like button, you gotta comment, you gotta click the notification bell. <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs>
So I screwed up on Okay, so that piece was from the movie Spirited Away or in Japanese Sento Chihiro no Kami Kakushi. And the name of the song is One Summer's Day. So yeah, check it out. Um what I have here, we never got this model we never had this model in before. This is the TT6 SW. SW for spruce and walnut. Very, very good looking walnut. Great sounding walnut as well. Overtones. Um, overtones for days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think there's people humming in the background. Oh. There's a chorus pedal on. <laughs> or the shimmer pedal. of the angels. <laughs> wow. Literally that note. It's like the that one the lady going ah, or whatever. Haha, mm -hmm. I can't even do that 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 range, but can you hear? Mm hmm That's the more I carry super high note. The whistle register. One of the cool things about a um, galele tuned up A to A is you get notes higher than you would get on a regular guitar. So like for guitar players, it gives you kind of another range. Yeah. A range you've never explored. I don't want to stop playing. There's so much going on. This is a tenor size instrument. God. Like, literally, either every chord or every other chord, there's some kind of hum in the background. It's, it's, there's, it's going by so fast here. top three strings all ring anyway <laughs> yeah wow
Things a monster. 